Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And listen, I want to thank Mama G, that's the only way I know her as, on Patreon, for sharing with me her amazing insight on uh, Jesus, the blind man, the, the uh, washing of the eyes, the clay, the spittle, etc., everything. What an amazing insight this lady had, and I wanted to share that with you and then expound on it a little bit more, because, uh, of course, anytime someone shares something with me, it naturally just kind of just sparks that revelation just to keep going deeper and deeper. And um, so she was, she wrote to me, she said, I want to share with you the way I actually see some of this as well. And uh, so I'm going to read to you I must, the, the, the scripture, and then I'll take you the way she shared that with me. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seen. The neighbors, therefore, and they which uh, before had seen him that was blind, said, It is not, is not this the, uh, he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said uh, they unto him, How were your eyes opened. He answered and said, a man called, uh, a man that is called Jesus made clay, anointed my eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed. I received sight. And they said unto him, where is he? He said, I know not. They brought, uh, they brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was on the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, he put clay upon my eyes, and I washed, and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keeps not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that he opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him. He had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked him, saying, Is your son, who you say was born blind, how then does he now see? His parents answered them, said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by this, by what means he is now seeth, we know not, nor or, or, hath, or, or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him, he shall speak for himself. You know, this is so fascinating. Now, i got to tell you what the sister said. Let me first want to back up real quick here. Um, uh, the sister, she says to me, and I'm just have to kind of paraphrase it in her comment there. She wrote in there, and by the way, this was the video I, lo I loaded on Patreon the other day where I talk about um, uh, one of the parables of Jesus where he talks about winter and summer. 47 minute long video in a couple of days it'll be here on Israeli News Live but if you want to catch it you can go over there and catch it early on <clears throat> and uh and and I'd actually made a challenge in that video too to see if anybody could catch the meaning of one question that I presented there that's actually going to happen again today on this video uh this one's a little bit simpler though <clears throat> at, at any rate though she she mentioned how that the clay representing that Adam was made from clay, that he was a clay figure, a man made from clay, uh, and how that, of course we know, this is how we end up law, that law comes to man, and that the law couldn't heal him, but when he went to the pool of Siloam, which by interpretation means sent, Jesus Christ was the one sent to give life, he was sent to be the healer, and of course, he it was, he doesn't actually receive a sight until he washes his eyes with the water, which is, in my interpretation, they are the waters of life, representing Christ. Once, the, in other words, the law couldn't heal him, 
But when it comes to the uh, water of life, then he did receive his sight. So uh, that really just was amazing. And it's true. The clay figure, Adam and Eve, when they were put in that body of flesh, they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And so therefore, by Adam, by the man made of clay, it brought forth the law. And the law does not heal. The law cannot bring forth healing. In fact, when Jesus put the clay on his eyes, it never healed him what one bit. And I was kind of looking real quick to see. Um, let's see. Uh, he said unto him, let's see. Uh, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground. Okay, let me back up here. Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, that's a profound statement in itself, right? Who sinned, him or his parents, that he was born blind? Well, how does he sin if he was born blind? You ever think of that one? Hmm. Uh, Jesus never talked about that issue, did he? Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned, nor his parents. that he was born blind. That's one for you to think about, right? But that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. I actually use that scripture in the message on Patreon because that one itself is so provocative because it speaks of the Sabbath. See, you can't have a Sabbath Unless there is an evening and a morning, as we read in Genesis, and was the first day. An evening and a morning, the second day. There has to be a night in order to get another day, because you couldn't count a Sabbath day. But if there is always light, there is no darkness, there is no night. If there is no night, then you have no chronological order of days, because you are now into eternity. Think about that, right? I want to show something to you, though, in light of what we see here and what this uh, Mama G's amazing revelation was there. Let's look at a couple of other things real quick. I want to take right here, and I want to share with you. Ve'yomad elakim, yishautzu hamayim, and God said, let the water swarm. Now, they kind of, it's a little bit more than what's actually there. Swarms of living creatures. No, well, no, I guess not. It's actually the same thing. Okay. Saratz nefesh chaya. All right. So it was, they swarmed with souls of life. It's almost as if the water itself, like Christ, was a giver of life. Ve'of ve'ofef. Al haaretz, okay, and let the fl fowl flying above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Al panei rakiah hashemaim. So water, the waters itself, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures. And I'm almost, I mean, we naturally we just think of the oceans and the fish and things like that. But I'm almost inclined to look at that in a little bit different way because Jesus Christ was the waters of life. If you remember in John chapter 4, then cometh to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Think about that one. Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jesus and Joseph are typing one another. Now, Jacob's well was there. Jacob's well was there. Well, it was given to his son Joseph. His well was there. And Christ comes to that very ground. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There come a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. Disciples were gone to, to the city to buy meat. Then says the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If 
You knew the gift of God and who it is that says to, to, says to you, give me to drink. You would not have asked of him. He would have given, excuse me, you wouldest have asked of him and he would have given you living water. Now see, he said, if you knew, knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you, give me to drink, you would have asked of him and he would give, had, have given you living water. Now, compare the contrast, right? In Genesis 1, chapter 20, the Yom Ed Elohim, God said, let the water swarm with swarms of living creatures. Life was coming forth from water. If you go to Genesis 6, verse 17, and behold, I do bring the flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh. Wherein is the breath of life. Ve'ani hineni, and I, behold, mebiet ha-mebol maim al ha'adz. I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth. La shechad kol beshar ashar bor ruach chaim. He brings it upon the earth to be able to destroy all basar, all flesh, which comes ashar bo ruach chaim. Destroy all the flesh. Which in him, Bo, which in him is the spirit of life. Metachat Hashemayim from under heaven. Kol ashar ba'aretz yagua, which is under heaven, and they all shall perish. And then we come back to John, and you see the contrast here. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you, "Give me to drink," you would have asked of Him, and He would have given you living water. The woman said unto Him, "Sir." You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then have you that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Remember, Jacob gave that parcel of ground to Joseph. Joseph was a type of Jesus Christ. Basically, Jacob was giving them the well, and Christ was that well of living water. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman says unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call your husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, You have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and he whom you now have is not your husband. And that you said truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. 
We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour come, Judeans, by the way, but the hour comes and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But you know what's interesting? If you take and you destroy all the flesh, where is the Ruach Chaim? God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, the waters of life is what causes you to be able to connect and become one with the Father. Remember, Jesus said, In that day you will know that I am in the Father, the Father is in me, and I am in you. And you are in me. All from the drinking from that well, the water of life. And if you follow, as that sister Mama G said, and recognize the law, the clay figure Adam, who ended up rejecting the tree of life. Think about it. There were two trees in the midst of the garden, the tree of life, the Ruach Chaim, the Eitz Chaim, I should say, which was Christ, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They chose the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which brought forth the law. Jesus anointed the blind man with the clay that he made from the earth itself, the very thing that Adam was made from, the clay. And it could not give him his sight. But when he washed in the pool of Siloam, then he knew that truly Jesus Christ was sent, as Siloam so meant, to give sight to the blind. And so he received his sight when the waters of life had given him back his life. And now he was partaking from what? The Eitz Chaim, the tree of life, versus that of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You know, there was one man I remember, and that's why I was reading further down in that to see if that was the one that, you know, set by the temple. And let me see if I can find that real quick because it just was on my mind as I was doing that. Um, and... Uh, and he was there was something wrong with him when he looked see any brochures and said him no hmm let me see I, I, I want to maybe it was Barnabas uh, that was the one by the temple Uh, let's see here. Just looking real quick. Let's see. Let's see. Maybe it's here in Matthew 9. Let's see. Okay. I was thinking, though. Okay, here's one right here. This is Matthew 21. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers 
in the seats of them that sold doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house should be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, and saying, Hosanna, the son of David, they were sore displeased, and said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? And he left them and went out of the city into the Bethany, and he lodged there. Again, kind of like what uh, Mama G had showed there about the, the clay. They were there at the temple, and the law never did anything for them. And yet, not only did he have the blind that came to him there, but the lame as well. And he healed them. The water of life. I'm Stephen Benoon. Thank you for listening. And thank uh, God bless that sister that shared that insight with me here that I could share that with you today. And that just goes to show God is no respect of persons. He that's thirsty, let him come and drink freely. He that knocks or knocketh, it shall be open to him that seeketh, he shall find. God will do it for anybody. Anyway, thank you for listening. Stephen Bernard with Israeli News Live. God bless you. Happy New Year. And let this year be full of the praises of Jesus Christ. And may we be filled with the revelation and understanding of him, filled with his spirit, such a wonderful year. Great things, I believe, will happen this year. God bless you.